Millions of people walk the New York City streets every day. So many familiar sights. And yet, so much uncharted territory. My name is Vic and Vase, and I'm a Brooklyn NYC photographer. You never know where in New York's five boroughs Vic will turn up next. But you can be sure it'll be hazardous to his health. Oh my God. Today, Vic is taking on one of his steepest challenges yet, confronting extreme heights and extreme weather. To catch one moment in time, his next unbelievable photo. Look at that fog. Can't see. I developed a passion. When I'm hanging above the city, I get a feeling of being one with the city. I, I had a unique way of looking at the city and I wanted to share it with the people around the world. When shooting from above, I love the way the buildings converge and I love the bird's eye view. I just love the way I, I see the people move below. And I see how the city is just moving right below me, and I see how life is just so continuous. I've always been a born adventurer. The only training I had was just life training. Climbing on jungle gyms, you know, just being a kid. My friends and I, sometimes we would go into abandoned buildings. We were doing this at like 14, 16. Born Victor Thomas in Brooklyn's Clinton Hill neighborhood, Vic is an urban explorer, a breed of radical adventurers who probe the city's secret spaces. These days, Vic is elevating his game. figured out that people are so into shock value. Sometimes people want to see you take risks. So I took the risk first, and I used the risk as an opportunity to get my talent out there. The higher Vic climbed, the more his social media following grew. And so did his need to up the ante. We on the bridge for real, all right? Want to come back in? All right, let's go back in. Sometimes I feel more scared than excited because I know what can happen. Vic takes no precautions, no harness, no tether, no net. He chances death with each and every photograph. I'm taking extreme risks. A majority of the time I do put my life on the line when I do put my foot over a ledge. Or like even, even if I hold my camera over the ledge, it's like I'm still putting someone in danger. If I don't make sure I'm safe, I can, I can kill myself or I can kill someone else. Today, Vic and a photographer friend are on a mission to capture a view of New York no one has ever seen. I'm climbing 60 flights up. You know, I feel the burn in my knees, I feel fatigued. Sometimes I say to myself, Dan, what am I doing here? But it's like, nah, man, sometimes the, the, the passion is in the work. Getting to that final entrance of the roof is, is a feeling you can't necessarily describe. I feel like I just won the lottery. Like, that's just the orgasm right there. Take a picture of me if you see me up here. Catch me up your ride. Good, you? It's adrenaline, but the adrenaline comes from the image that I produce. But this climb is about to test Vic like never before. Out of nowhere, a blanket of fog rolls in. Bro, look, oh my god. Can't see. Ooh. 
Vic is trapped up on the ladder, 60 stories up, blinded by fog. But against the odds, he gets what he came for. The city is like in the palm of my hands. The Kutcher boys have worked on some of Hollywood's biggest projects, from San Andreas to Tombstone, from NCIS to Jackass. Woo! Now, as they prepare for their next big film, They're testing out something bigger, better, and more hardcore than anything before. An explosion so dangerous, it could trim the Kutcher family from a trio to a solo act. Can they pull it off? This vehicle's hot. It's ready to explode and flip. Or will a single miscalculation end in disaster? For this family, it's just another day at the office. Here we come. Believe it. Or not. <laughs> Under the tutelage of their father, veteran effects guru Matt Kutcher, Zach and Matt Jr. have driven nose first into the hotbed of Hollywood stunts and special effects. If I had to describe my father to somebody who had never met him, determined, driven, and crazy in a way that just builds success. His madness, his beauty, and everything he does. The boys should know. They've had a front row seat for their dad's work since they were young. They lived in that environment with me. And um, they travel to all the places I've been to, for the most part, with me on movie sets. I didn't really go to a normal public school system. I woke up every day and went to work with my dad. He had tutors that would come out and educate us on set. I think we've grown a lot as a family. And I think at the point in our careers, we're beginning to work with each other rather than for each other, right? If you see somebody go through the broken window, you see a car flip over and explode, you see a boat, you know, driving along and smacking another boat and they both explode, well, that's us. Full-time badass. <laughs> Movie stunts got their start at the beginning of the 20th century with comedians like Buster Keaton and Charlie Chaplin. But it wasn't until the 1960s and 70s with the implementation of air compression technology, explosives, and bullet squibs that modern day stunts began to take shape. By the 1980s, everything was bigger, faster, and even more dangerous, with 21 stuntmen dying on the job. Now in the 21st century, it's a whole new frontier, thanks to CGI. Lots of planning goes in, but in the end, the hand of the stunt coordinator should be totally invisible. Today, Matt and his boys are allowing us under the hood as they test out their latest stunt. The gag is in the script is that the car comes sliding in at high speed and a hand grenade gets thrown and the car gets blown up and blows over it in a spectacular way. But can they pull off this killer trick? without exploding themselves in the process? I think the worst thing in this stunt could be complete catastrophic failure, and it would prematurely detonate for some reason. Well, you're engulfed in that fireball. That's horrific. All right, effect is hot. This is the first time they've ever attempted this stunt. Everyone here knows the risks. At any one given time on these sets, a lot could go wrong. 
what we're about to do is dangerous, we're going to be smart about it, and then we're going to make sure we don't screw it up. Matt Sr. is driving, and Zach's in the passenger seat. But Matt Jr. has the most vital role, pushing the button on the flipper, a machine packed with highly compressed air that can launch a car 20 feet into the sky at the push of a button. The timing is critical. A few seconds off, and the flipper could launch the car on top of his father and brother, killing them instantly. The first time you press a button, you're shaky, you're nervous. If it wasn't my brother, I wouldn't trust it. You just don't want to mess it up. The entire team is in place, but it will take pinpoint precision to get it right. All right, effect is hot. Here we come. going a tremendous distance. Nice big fireball, but the flipper, it's off the ground four or five feet. But the computer is gonna go back and remove that flipper so you don't see it. Unless you saw it in the slow motion that you wouldn't have known that happens. Your naked eye would never pick that up. I don't know that I wanted to get my children involved in this business, but since they are now, and they're excelling at it at such a high rate of speed and at such a high level for their age, it's extraordinary. I, I love watching it every day. Who's got to clean that up? <laughs> 우주에서 가장 재미있는 채널 디스커버리.